Jesse, it's time for this week's Calling the Clock, and we've got eight great topics on the board this week. I'm very excited to get to them. So let's just put two minutes on the clock and get started with the WSOP proposal that happened. A literal proposal, let's put a ring on it type of situation. You don't see that too often. That's right, man. It was, uh, what event was it, Chad? It was the 10K PLO Championship Event 50. And I mean, it was just another tournament. Just, you know, there's, there's lots of these all summer long. If you don't know, there's a lot, there's tournaments popping off every day. Some days, 11 tournaments running. And uh, this one was a little special because as soon as Garza. Yeah. Lou Garza, AP Garza, yeah. longtime crusher. He's been around for a long time. He's yeah. got that look. Uh, I'm looking at his photo, winner's photo right now. Bad Bunny. I don't know if you, you know who Bad Bunny yeah. is, but yeah, yeah, looks just like him. <laughs> you may not think I'm, I'm a big you know musical. I know who Bad Bunny is. Okay. Okay. Got. But, uh, but yeah, dude, he, he's behind the table. He's celebrating his his girlfriend's over there and he just, he looked at her and his eyes locked and he just dropped one knee. And it was so, so sick. And you just tell her, you see her reaction, just shake your head. I mean, what, what, what? I mean, what, how cool, how cool. And all the pictures, it's just so. Yeah. You just ah, win a bracelet, ah. $1.3 million, even before the winner's photo. This is almost immediately after his big win, he gets down on one knee. Uh, it, that that's a great moment. You win a bracelet for him. She gets a ring like I, I, it's just a, a great moment in this is the sort of stuff you love to see when somebody wins a bracelet. It's a life changing moment. Yeah. Uh, some people I've been around. I've been hundreds of them over the years. Some people are just, oh, great. Can we get this over with so I can go play in the next tournament? Yeah, I love these moments where somebody really embraces it and it's a life changing moment and we get to share in it. Uh, AP Garza, Lou Garza here. Amazing. I'm glad she said yes. I hope they live happily ever after. Poker is all about the stories, man, about the characters, right? And what, what Lou Garza just did was he just made himself someone that we will remember because there we don't see this very often. I mean, I don't, I've never seen it. I've seen some stories happen, but that was the first time I've ever seen a proposal or after a bracelet win, and I love to do it. It was so fun. Yeah, so. congratulations to, to to both of them, and yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. go get uh, another another bracelet. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Chad, this story was, I wasn't ready for this one. This was uh, one that kind of fell on into my lap and happenstance. So right now there are online bracelets going on in both Michigan and Pennsylvania. And Nevada and New Jersey. Right, but oh, yeah. we're live reporting those. We're not in Michigan and right. Pennsylvania. So about once a week I go through and I do a little recap for these. And there was a winner in Michigan and uh, great. And I decided, you know what, let me Google this. I'd see if there's a, a photo of him out there because we don't have access to that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, we just the name. Course. Well, unfortunately, I found a news story about the winner of this particular bracelet. Uh, his name was Rudy Gavaldon, and basically he was arrested last year for, uh, I think, a, a, an intent to commit murder against his wife. A very brutal, brutal domestic assault situation, yeah. uh, and he is awaiting trial. He's out on bond and wins a WSOP gold bracelet in between. And Feels wrong. Yeah, it's, I don't think there's, it's, look, it, it, poker is great. And if you, and for the most part, if you don't do anything bad in poker, then, you know, in the casino space itself, it doesn't matter what your history is off right. the felt. Yeah, of course. Right. And anybody who puts up the buy-in, and we've seen that throughout yeah. the years, there's been murders, uh, you know. Oh, I can tell you yeah, stories. Yeah, there's yeah. a bunch out there. Uh, you just don't usually see them oh. winning like this What in such a, a, a scenario where he's still awaiting the charges and trial. and. I won't go into too many details, but it was a pretty brutal yeah. situation. Um, yeah. And I mean, and, and, you know, some people ask me, do we get tipped off on the story? And no, we were just trying to, again, tell a story. You know, we, we usually bracelet winners are heroes. We want to tell that story. And this is not a hero, heroic story. This is a, uh, when I, I, I mean, it's crazy. It's definitely crazy, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> both good guys and bad guys win poker tournaments. And this was one instance, uh, and we'll just have to wait and see how this plays out when the trial comes. Negreanu wants to make some changes to the Poker Hall of Fame, Chad, and I support what he is. <laughs> He's cooking up, man. He's cooking. He's in the kitchen. He's got some great ideas. Yeah, I so I love Negreanu's opinion on the Poker Hall of Fame changes, but yep. differ in his vision uh, voting criteria a little bit uh, and over the years and because the media used to get a vote, yep. right? We don't anymore, so it's not such an issue, but yep. he's a very purist. When it comes, he doesn't think that you should take into consideration like a Chris Moneymaker, right? As a player, he's a he's a player, but he's also done so much for the game. Mm -hmm. The two he doesn't think should combine because it's either player or builder, right? Yeah. Very separate. And a lot of us have the kind of more of a blend. That's neither here nor there. 
But uh, what he's saying in terms of change, and I agree with him, he says two people should get in every year, yep. and then every third year... Two players. Or two players, yeah, every year. And then every third year, you add in somebody from the builder category. Yeah. And I think that's a great way to go about it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it might not be the perfect solution, but it's definitely... Uh, better than what it is. It's definitely for... <clears throat> I mean, we say better than what it is, right? The Poker Hall of Fame is something we're very, we're very lucky to have. Okay, we're lucky that there are people who do care about the history and that they preserve that because this started way before us with other people who had other intentions, who knows. But I mean, at this point, we have inherited it as the poker community. And at this point, people have made decisions just put one person per year. Hey, at least it's not dormant. At least it's not completely canceled. At least it's not lost. We still have it. And so I think these changes that Daniel suggests is a great way, of course, to just help help empty the bench of people waiting. Right. There are people who have made it who have just had great resumes, who are definitely do it, but we can't get them all in while they're alive If, right. if with, this, with this situation. We've got to make some changes if we're going to be able to celebrate people when they have an ability to, to experience it as well. We did a, a poll. Do you agree with Negreanu? 81% agree with him. Only 1% said disagree, keep it the same. 10% said disagree, but changes are needed. There you go. <clears throat> Billy Baxter, dude. Dude. How sick was this? That was How awesome. How sick was this? Poker Hall of Famer. Oh, this man. Legendary player. You don't see him hardly off, you know, maybe one or two events a year. Yeah. And then comes to the 2023 World Series of Poker and makes a run in the seniors event. I mean, this massive field. I don't even know how many entries it got. Uh, oh, it was record-breaking. Over 8,000. Yeah. And he goes and he's at the final table and makes it all the way to heads-up play. Dude. And unfortunately, he was very short-stacked compared to his uh, his opponent. But it was so cool. I mean, yeah. Billy Baxter is is a legend in the history books of poker. And what he's probably most familiar with most people is, is that he staked Stu Unger during his his main event run in the nineties when he when he won. You know, when he came the comeback kid, right? When he came back and won his third bracelet, his main event bracelet. Um, I mean It would have been his first bracelet in 21 years would have been bracelet number eight which is incredible yeah and you say best known like he is known for that certainly but all poker players whether you know it or not old billy baxter a huge debt of gratitude because he is the player who went to battle against the united states government and it was billy baxter versus the u.s in terms of the taxes right they went after him right yeah in terms of taxing his poker winnings as if they were the same as winning them in a lottery or on a slot machine and he went in and proved in a court of law that mm. no, it should be treated as a profession. And so there are write-offs. You can write off the travel. You can write off the buy-ins and things yeah. like that. He did that. He put up the money, went and fought, uh, uh, and we all owe him a great debt of gratitude for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Billy unfortunately did finish in second place, taking home $473,212. He lost Career to, score, though. Oh, I mean, come on. I know. Come on, dude. I mean, what, that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Lonnie Hallett was the winner from Canada, taking home 765k. But come on, Billy, let's get that. Let's get the next bracelet. Let's let's come on back. Let's bring it back. Yeah, that would be great. It's great, great to see him. All right, Phil Helmuth makes a deep run in the 10k horse. I mean, uh, listen. I mean, we we talk about these guys all the time. <clears throat> I love seeing Helmuth make a deep run. There's just something magical about seeing Helmuth make those final two tables, and that's what happened in the 10k horse championship. Unfortunately, he did not make the final table. But again. Team, like that's like I get you. It's exciting when he's there, but it's like he's knocking on the door and he just nobody's answering. Like we need a Phil Helmuth at the final table. Here he finishes in eleventh place for almost thirty thousand dollars. I want to see him be in a position to go for number seventeen, right? So here in this case, yes, he came close. He was near the final table, but he didn't have a ton of chips or anything. I want to see him make a final table, have some chips, and actually be like, okay, is this going to happen? Because I'm telling you, I've been there for his last six bracelet wins. There's, <laughs> there's hardly a feeling at the World Series of Poker more exciting than when Helmuth is at a final table with a chance to win it. we just seen it. I think it was last year. He made it heads up for number 17 and didn't end up getting there, but it's still, you still get that excitement. Can he actually do? We've seen it. Same thing like uh, Billy Baxter, like, Ooh, this is, this is something special at brewing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but come on, you got to get there, Phil, you got to get there. And I still think that he and the ground have a good shot at taking home at least one bracelet this summer. I mean, there's still plenty of bracelet events to go and Helmuth is definitely dialed in. It's just, uh, I mean, it's poker, Chad, you know, we, uh, we can't win every freaking hand we get. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully we do see Helmuth make that that run yeah i mean it's he's putting in the volume he seems to be in good spirits his dressing room or his restroom whatever you want to call it <laughs> not, like, not bathroom restroom you know his steam room is negroni would call it 
He's right next to us. He's having fun, right? We talked about it in the last show where he dressed up with Jungle Man in the tag team event. Yeah. Uh, so he's in good spirits, it seems. But we're halfway through the WSOP. He's been knocking out the door. Like I said, somebody's just got to open it up, or he's got to open it up and go in. Let's make a run at number 17. Ryan, go Felta Fish to Eriquezo. Eriquezo. Eriquezo, thank you. Ryan Eriquezo multitasks his way to his third WSP bracelet. Boom. Love this. Love this. What do you mean by multitask? So multitasks his way because he's in the Salute to Warriors, and he bags the second biggest stack of, for day two. Love to see that. Or, or was he a chip leader? Did he bag the chip lead? i um, got to go back and find it. It doesn't matter. It's yeah. here nor Anyways, there. he did that while winning his third bracelet. Online. Online. WSOP.com, yeah. yes. It was event number 10, the $400 No Limit Hold'em Ultra Deep Stack. It had like 2,900 runners, something crazy. Huge field. Uh, and I know Ryan Aracazo from, it was the WSOP Circuit National Championship at one time. Then it, the Global Casino Championship at Morph. He won that twice for his first two bracelets. Mm. Now he gets to add that with an online bracelet. He's an East Coast grinder, been around for a long time, very solid player. And it was really cool to see him do this. Like, can you imagine to you're, you're crushing live and you're on your tablet or your computer I mean, and you're, <laughs> you're crushing there too. It's just, I mean, it's just, it's not fair. Like you have to spread the run good to everybody else. I mean, it's just how wild, how wild. I mean, yeah, I, our picture we're using in this, in this kind of clock bit shows him with his phone and his massive chip stack in the event too. And how crazy. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I want some run good. I want, I want, uh, I'll take one or the other. I don't need, I prefer live, but I'll, I'll take an online bracelet too. I mean, please. It is the one exception the WSOP makes about not being on your right. phone in between your hands. hands yeah. yeah. If you're playing on WSOP.com, uh, okay. It's, it's all right. If you do that. Yeah, that's right. I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool though, to, to see him win his, his third. And uh, I'm sure he's going to be putting himself in a position to win even more. He crushes, like I said, the WSOP circuit, um, you know, he's just, he's one of those guys who has poker in his blood. And we see that here by multitasking, which some players do. A lot of players though, aren't capable of doing such a thing. Jesse, you and I included probably, I don't think I'd do good at yeah, that. I'm, I'm good at eating while playing poker, dude. Not at all. <laughs> okay. So time for the player of the year update. I mean, we changed the numbers and Sean Deeb is now at the very tip top. He's got 3,143 points, but right on his tail. Who's also making a deep run in the middle. I was going to say that. Yeah is Ian Matakis. Yeah, so, I mean, it, I mean, depending on what plays out over the course of the next week, but it sounds like because oh. he's in this Millie Maker, which got a huge 10,430 entries, yeah, he's going to get a lot of points for that. So Matakis could very well take the the lead. I'm looking at the live updates right now to see if uh, if he's still in there. But uh, this is a tight, much more tight race than we expected. Um, Matakis still in there. So we all thought Chad... Evis Eve Sledge yeah, was yeah. going to run away with it when he won two bracelets right off the top of the no WSOP. Kidding. Yeah. And now he is sitting in seventh place. There's been six people to pass him. So you have Sean Deeb uh, with 3,143 points and Ian Matakis, 3,008. Then there's a pretty big gap, uh, about 500 points. Uh, Michael Rodriguez, Pires Santos, Chance Cornet there with 2,300, Josh Arie, 2,300 points. So right now, the top two, yeah. Deeb and Matakis, pretty close. And it's interesting because Ian Matakis out of Minnesota, he is a no limit player. He doesn't okay. really play mixed games. So he's doing this oh. by playing just no limit, whoa, uh, both online whoa. and live, yeah. where you have Deeb who plays it all, but really known for his mixed games. Both have won a bracelet so far mm -hmm. this summer. <clears throat> uh, it's, it's pretty tight and pretty exciting, honestly, to see a guy who just puts effort into no limit making a run at player of the year because you usually don't see that. It's usually the mixed games, guys. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I saw Sean Deeb tweet that he, was, uh, he wasn't he was really too concerned because with Matakas' deep run in this, it kind of like pushes him away from a lot of other tournaments that he could be jumping into. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's playing, you know, yes, he did. He can play online and live, but not sure he's going to be willing to spread amongst all the other live events. Like, like right. I've seen Deeb run back and forth and do multi. If he can just do what Eric Hazel does, multitask the live and online. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, just do crush both. Mike Madisell, buddy, wow. buddy. How sick were you? Did you, uh, I know you've been sick for a while, Chad, but were you watching this? I was. It was event number 55, the 1507 card stud, high, low, eight or better. One of Mike's best games. So it's been 10 years since Mike won his latest bracelet, which was number four. I was there. I think that was the 5,007 card stud, high, low, back at the Rio. In this event, 566 runners, and he gets heads up with Marcin uh, Hareki out of Poland, well known poker player. Matisau has a chip deficit, but he's not going down without a fight. He has Phil Helmuth on the rail, uh, Steve Buckner, a.k.a. Cuz, a former yep, guest here yep. on the show. 
they're there supporting him and he's pretty excited but try as he might that chip differential was just too much to overcome ended up finishing in in second place but it was still pretty exciting to see like all right the mouth has still got it dude i mean he got so close to getting like near 50 50 chips like where he was i mean he yeah he had a big deficit but he climbed up and, and he just kept getting hit back down hit back down and I was I was at home in bed updating poker news like crazy, dude. I was watching my buddy Will Butcher over in the uh, the Salute Warriors, who's at the Fountain Table right now. But I was also going back and forth to Manasau. I wanted to see, and it was uh it was unfortunate he didn't make his his fifth brace. I really wanted him to. A good silver lining is he's nominated for the Poker Hall of Fame, and yeah. this bolsters his case even further. Look, he's he's still got it. He's still going deep. He was knocking on the door for another bracelet. However, that same token, Brian Rast. Was exactly. at this final table. Exactly. He finished in seventh place. Uh, so another deep run for him, who is largely, I think, considered the favorite for the Poker Hall of Fame this year after winning the PPC for the third time. Yeah. But Matisau here is saying, hey, not so fast, because I do think Matisau has a lot of support in that Poker Hall of Fame race as well. So Yeah, uh, I, I did tell you last week that I know Mike Matisau was making the you Hall did. of Fame. And this this scene, this second place was pretty sick for me. I loved it. Yeah, loved it, it was definitely bolsters his case, as I said. That's right. Okay, well, that's going to wrap our calling the clock segment. Uh, Chad, I think it's time for us to bring our guests. Let's bring I can't in, wait. Bring in worldwide Yokosawa. Yokosawa. <laughs> 